There have been many names for what some call God. The list goes on because each religion will have their own name for God. Hello, my name is Patricia, and I will be guiding you through this movie and sharing important information for you to think about. I will be referring to God as I am because I was guided to do so. I am is Alpha and Omega and needs no name. The reason I created this video was not to disclaim religions, but to show how religion can sometimes interfere with a person's relationship with I am. I also want to share with those who are not affiliated with a religion that they too can connect with I am. In fact, this video is for everyone who wishes to connect with I am and would like to know how they can live heaven on earth. To begin, we must first decide and agree on what or who came first. Religion, man, or I am. I think it's unanimous that number one is I am the creator of all. Do you agree? Then came man, created by I am. It can be no other way, if you think about it. Agree? And then, religion. Agree? Man did create religion in I Am's name. I Am did not create religion as some religions would have you believe. It is important at this point to define the term religion as it has many meanings as there are names for I Am. I use Wikipedia to gather information and share, as it is simple. Religion from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Religion is an organized collection of beliefs, cultural systems, and worldviews that relate humanity to an order of existence. Many religions have narratives, symbols, and sacred histories that are intended to explain the meaning of life and or to explain the origin of life or the universe. From their beliefs about the cosmos and human nature, people derive morality, ethics, religious laws, or a preferred lifestyle. According to some estimates, there are roughly 4,200 religions in the world. So we have 4,200 religions, more or less, 4,200 ways to say I am, and 4,200 times millions of believers who believe that their belief is the right one. There have been many wars, persecution, and conflicts over the centuries in the name of these beliefs. In spite of all this, each religion still believes that their way is the right and the only way. I will now show you a graphic illustration about religion versus I am so you can see for yourself the truth that I have uncovered along with others. I ask you to please observe rather than judge for the sake of understanding. 
This blue star represents I am, which is the infinite and the alpha, omega, universal creator. Since mankind was created in the image of I am, this blue star also represents mankind as well. This blue box represents religion with traditions, rules, ceremonies, and regulations concerning the beliefs of that particular religion. When mankind uses religion to connect with I am, then mankind must also follow the guidelines of that particular religion in order to connect with I am. Sometimes a person must go to another person as a go-between in order to connect with I am or have their sins forgiven, etc., etc., etc. You may have observed that religion has created a separation from I am in this graphic illustration. The separation continues when the afterlife is spoken of in religion. According to most religions, there are places for those to go after death. To keep it simple, I will address these places as heaven and hell, as these places have many names as well. According to one's particular religion, if they did not follow the rules, guidelines, and regulations, then they may go to hell. Although no one can confirm, only threaten this so. What is hell? Where is hell? According to Wikipedia and a Bible source on the internet, they state this, Hell in the Bible is a place of future punishment and the final destination for unbelievers. It is described in scripture using various terms such as eternal fire, outer darkness, a place of weeping and torment, the lake of fire, the second death, unquenchable fire. The most terrifying reality of hell is that it will be a place of complete, unending separation from God. In many mythological folklore and religious traditions, hell is a place of eternal torture in an afterlife, often after resurrection. It is viewed by most Abrahamic traditions as a place of punishment Religions with a linear divine history often depict hell as endless. Religions with a cyclic history often depict a hell as an intermediary period between incarnations. Typically, these traditions locate hell under the earth's external surface and often include entrances to hell from the land of the living. Other afterlife destinations include heaven, purgatory, paradise, and limbo. Other traditions which do not conceive of the afterlife as a place of punishment or reward merely describe hell as an abode of the dead, a neutral place located under the surface of earth. For example, see Shaul and Hades. Modern understandings of hells often depict them abstractively as a state of loss rather than as fiery torture literally underground. But this view of the concept of hell can in fact be traced back into the ancient and medieval periods as well. Hell is sometimes portrayed as populated with demons who tormented those dwelling there. Many are ruled by a death god such as Nergal, Hades, Hell, Enma, or the Devil. If you have been observing and listening, you will have noticed that separation occurs from God, I am, according to religion. The descriptions of Hell 
may or do create fear in all those who have beliefs in a particular religion, a fear so great that it will be their destiny if they do not follow the rules, traditions, or beliefs. It also is a way to confirm their religion as all other non-believers will meet their destiny and further separating man from I am. The question is, is this the same concerning heaven? What is heaven? Where is heaven? From Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, Heaven. The heavens, or seven heavens, is a common, religious, cosmological, or transcendent place from which heavenly beings such as God, angels, the jinn, and sky deities like King or Queen of Heaven, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, Son of Heaven, Heavenly Saints or Venerated Ancestors originate, are enthroned or inhabit. It is commonly believed that heavenly beings can descend to earth or incarnate and that earthly beings can ascend to heaven in the afterlife or in exceptional cases enter heaven alive. Heaven is often described as a higher place, the holiest place, a paradise, in contrast to hell or the underworld or the low places and universally or conditionally accessible by earthly beings according to various standards of divinity, goodness, piety, faith, or other virtues, or right beliefs, or simply the will of God. Some believe in the possibility of a heaven on earth in a world to come. In an article, What is Heaven Like? by Dr. Ray Pritchard, Keep Believing Ministries, states this. Everyone wants to know about heaven, and everyone wants to go there. Recent polls suggest that nearly 80% of all Americans believe there is a place called heaven. I can find that statistic encouraging because it tells me that even in this skeptical age, there is something deep inside the human heart that cries out, there's got to be something more, something more than the pain and suffering of this life. Something more than 70 or 80 years on planet Earth. Something more than being born, living, dying, and then being buried in the ground. Sometimes we talk about a God-shaped vacuum inside the human heart. I believe there is also a heaven-shaped vacuum a sense that we were made for something more than this life. We were made to live forever somewhere. In a real sense, we were made for heaven. The message is similar that when Dr. Pritchard stated he believed we were meant for heaven is a part of our truth. The truth is that we are born longing for a connection instead of a separation from God, I am, and that we spend most of our lives searching for ways to connect, and some believe that only in death we can connect. Another statement he made as well, there is another fascinating statistic I should mention. Not only do most Americans believe in heaven, most people expect to go there when they die. If you took a microphone to the streets of Chicago and asked, do you think you will go to heaven when you die? The vast majority of people would answer, I hope so, or I think so, or perhaps, I think I've got a good chance. Not very many people would say they aren't going to heaven. Perhaps one modest point is in order. Whenever you talk about living forever somewhere, it would help to know for sure where you are going. After all, 
if you're wrong about heaven, you're going to be wrong for a long, long time. Up to this point, we have viewed judgment. We have also viewed separation. And most of all, fear. Is this truly how I am? Wants to connect with us in fear, separation, judgment? Is this the qualities of I am? Fear, separation, and judgment? No, it isn't. And I'm here to share some information with you that may help you in your search for connecting with I am. My message is similar to Dr. Pritchard's when he stated that he believed we were meant for heaven, which is part of the truth. The truth is that we were born longing for a connection instead of separation from God, I am, and that we spend most of our lives searching for ways to connect with some believing that only in death we can connect. The information that I am now sharing comes from these sources, A Course of Love, scribed by Mari Perone, and Dying to Be Me by Anita Morjani, and most of all, by living in the now and being what I have learned. I will now be reading from A Course of Love ascribed by Mari Perone. This course, which is three books, has changed my life by opening my heart, and I am in hopes that this course of love will inspire you as well. I am not associated with this course for any monetary gain, and other than reading it and applying it to my life as well, I am now in relationship with others who have read this course as well. Seventeen three, As soon as spirit took on form, man began to exist in time because there became a need for a beginning and an ending to the chosen experience. Each self of form is born into time, and each self of form dies out of time. Both birth and death have always existed as choices, as beginnings and endings to the finite experience of time. It is the nature of what is finite to begin and end. Birth and death are all you have seen as true new beginnings. 17.4 Time is a measurement of the time it takes for learning to occur. A new experience was chosen, the experience of existing within the realm of physicality. As such, it was as much as a new beginning as the new beginning you are now called to. It required the learning of a new thought system, the thought system of the physical, a thought system that was not needed before there was physical form. The creation story of Adam and Eve, as well as many other creation stories, but tell of a mistake in the learning of a thought system of physicality, a mistake that became a building block for all that came after it. 17.5 That mistake was seeing God as other than and separate from the self. While it is important to the desired experience to learn the lessons of what was observable within the physical realm, 
to have begun to forget the unobservable began a process of unlearning or forgetting of the truth that has led through the learning of untruth in the mechanism of time to the world in which you now exist. It may seem ridiculous to say that the untrue can be learned, but this is exactly what has been learned during the time of your experience in physical form. Since your true self could not learn the untrue, a new self, which we called the ego self, was made. Since the ego self cannot learn the true, your true self had to be appealed to for this learning to take place. All the information I have shared up to this point until the end of this video is information for you to observe and see if you can or are willing to use in your life. I did not create this video to change the world, just inform. It is up to each individual to decide if they want to give up their power and live in fear or live in union with love and I am. This unity with I am cannot be accomplished as a group or by following preset conditions or rules. It is an individual choice with individual dialogue within yourself in order to connect with your true self. And only with that selfless, solitary action, you will be certain that we all are one with the universe and there is no separation and never has been from I am. The words I have just spoken were from my heart and are confirmed by the following words in the treatises. While this has been called the time of Christ, it is obviously no longer the time of Jesus Christ. My time came and my time ended. The time when a single baby born of a virgin mother could change the world has passed. The world is quite simply bigger now, and the identities of your personal selves split by far more than history, and far more than the oceans that separate east from west. This is why this call to return to yourself is being sounded far and wide and why it goes out to humble and ordinary people like yourself. There is no exclusivity to this call. It excludes no race, nor religion, nor ones of either sex or sexual preference. It but calls all to love and to live in the abundance of truth. From the book, Dying to Be Me, by Anita Morjani. If we are energetic beings inseparable from the universal life force, we don't need any outside system to make decisions for us or to tell us how our energy can be raised or lowered. We're all unique, so no one can really make blanket rules about what's right for us. However, this is what many organized spiritual systems and religions seem to do. Once a structure is established, everyone is expected to follow the same tenets. Those who choose not to are judged negatively, and that's how and why organized religions create d divisiveness and strife instead of the unity that they're trying to establish with those very rules. Following a religious path doesn't necessarily exempt us from living a life of fear or even victimizing others. Following a personal spiritual path, however, 
means to follow the promptings of our own inner being and taps into the infinite self we all are at our core. There are millions of books available concerning religion and beliefs, and with over 4,200 religions in the world, each also would have their book as a guide to their followers. Here is where you might want to ask yourself this. If there is only one God, I am, why are there over 4,200 religions and books concerning how to worship God, I am? Could it be that each author or authors were inspired with their own personal experience concerning God I Am, then created their experience into words and inspiration for others? The followers then gathered in numbers, some more than others, and created groups and labeled themselves as a religious group. A group that is divine for some may not be for others. So over the centuries, we would pick and choose the group where we felt most comfortable. Some had no choice as they were born into a religion or they would be considered sacrilegious and casted out if they did not agree. Those who do not associate with a particular religion are labeled as non-believers, sacrilegious, disbelievers in God, and the list goes on. Thirty years ago, I had a major question concerning God I Am. The answers I received were memorized verses from the Bible. That was when I decided to seek elsewhere and found out years later I just had to look within my heart, as can anyone else. Our relationship with God I Am cannot be found in books written by others. It is found within you'll be certain it is from God I am because you will receive only messages of love. On a special note, there are some books that will be helpful in your journey. And if you can give them your heart test, you will know if the information inside will be helpful and show you how to live in love or if they contain messages of fear. I will now share with you the words of Anita Marjani as she reflects beautifully what happens after death and what I was certain of because of my reading A Course of Love and applying it to my personal self and life. I did not feel as though I had physically gone somewhere else. It was more as though I had awakened. Perhaps I had finally been roused from a bad dream. My soul was finally realizing its true magnificence. And in doing so, it was expanding beyond my body and this physical world. It extended further and further outward until it encompassed not only this existence, but continued to expand into another realm that was beyond this time and space, and at the same time included it. Love, joy, ecstasy, and awe poured into me, through me, and engulfed me. I was swallowed up, 
and enveloped in more love than I ever knew existed. I felt more free and alive than I ever had. As I described, I suddenly knew things that were not physically possible, such as conversations between medical staff and my family that were taking place far away from my hospital bed. The overwhelming sensations were in a realm of their own, and words do not exist to describe them. The feeling of complete, pure, unconditional love was unlike anything I had known before. Unqualified and non-judgmental, it was totally undiscriminating, as if I didn't have to do anything to deserve it, nor did I need to prove myself to earn it. I became aware that we're all connected. This was not only every person and living creature, but the interwoven unification felt as though it were expanding outward to include everything in the universe. Every human, animal, plant, insect, mountain, sea, inanimate object, and the cosmos. I realized that the entire universe is alive and infused with consciousness, encompassing all of life in nature. Everything belongs to an infinite whole. I was intricately, inseparably enmeshed with all of life. We're all facets of that unity. We're all one and each of us has an effect on the collective whole. I became aware of a boundary before me. Although the demarcation wasn't physical, it was more like an invisible threshold marked by a variation in energy levels. I knew that if I crossed it, there was no turning back. All my ties with the physical world would be permanently severed, and as I had seen, my family would be told that my death was the result of organ failure caused by the end-stage lymphoma. The unconditional love and acceptance was incredible and I wanted to cross the threshold in order to continue to experience it for eternity. It was as though I was enveloped in the oneness, the pure essence of every living being and creature without their aches, pains, dramas, and egos. Before I became sucked into what was going on with my physical existence and my family, however, I found myself being drawn away from my emotions. Once again, I was surrounded by the reassuring feeling of a greater story unfolding. I knew that even if I chose not to go back, everything was exactly as it should be in the grand tapestry of life. In the moment that I made the decision to go on toward death, I became aware of a new level of truth. I discovered that since I'd realized who I really was and I understood the magnificence of my true self, if I chose to go back to life, my body would heal rapidly. Not in months or weeks, but in days. I knew that the doctors wouldn't be able to find a trace of cancer if I chose to go back into my body. How can that be? I was astounded by this revelation and wanted to understand why. It was then that I understood that my body is only a reflection of my internal state. If my inner self were aware of its greatness and connection with all that is, my body would soon reflect that and heal rapidly. 
Before I conclude with one last quote from A Course of Love, I would like to thank you for viewing this movie. I am in hopes that the information provided was of value and support to you. Sincerely and always from my heart space, this is Patricia. I ask you to share a vision of what is, the very vision of what is that is Christ Consciousness. It is a vision of the perfection of creation. It is a vision of unity and relationship in harmony. It excludes no one and no one's choice and no one's vision. Your brothers and sisters who do not choose their natural state still are who they are and as holy as yourself. Your brothers and sisters who choose alternative visions are still who they are and as holy as yourself. All choices are forever encompassed by the embrace. There is no wrong choice. No one is excluded. All are chosen.